All right, in the last section of this topic, we're going to, going to discuss glancing collisions. So what happens if we have an object that's coming up like this and an object that is coming up like this? How do we handle that? Because they collide at that point, but momentum is a vector. So that means that we have to worry about as we're doing the conservation momentum, the X component of the momentum and the Y component of the momentum. Now, the first thing I do want to explain, because it often leads to a little bit of confusion, is I drew those two blue arrows showing the physical path of the object. However, when we actually draw our velocity vectors, which should match the, um, the path or the direction that the object is moving in, we're going to draw them very similar to how we did for the component method in topic two. For if this one is one, this one is two, this is going to follow through into the first quadrant and this is going to follow through into the second quadrant. And I want you guys to be cautious because the angles that I'm going to be providing in the problem are going to match how you would draw it in the component method. But you have to remember that the vector is pointing this direction and the vector is pointing this direction so if I drew a coordinate system at the end of each of these vectors, you can clearly see this should be in the first quadrant and clearly see this should be in the second quadrant. So I'm providing these angles here as you would draw them in the component method just to be clear and consistent about it because that's what you're actually going to use in order to break things into components. But I get a little bit of confusion from students because when it's drawn like this, it looks like the objects are never going to collide and they don't understand where a collision comes from. So I'm explaining to you guys, this is picture is solely for the concept of breaking things in the components. This is more physically what is actually happening. Now, whenever we do glancing collisions, as I mentioned before, we're going to have motion in both the X and Y direction. And because velocity is a vector, when we do conservation momentum, we have to split that velocity into components. So you'll notice there's an X direction equation and a y direction equation, and this is for inelastic. And there's an x direction equation and a y direction equation, and this is for perfect inelastic. We're not going to do conservation of momentum for elastic collisions in the glancing collision style, because there's a lot more complexity that goes into those relationships. In fact, one of those relationships only works because it's a linear or only in the x direction. That means you'll have to be given information to break the initial velocities in the components and then when you get an answer you'll have an x component and a y component that you'll have to then find the magnitude and direction for. So let me explain how to do that on the next slide because it's actually just parts of the component method. Alright, so say that you have a velocity in the problem that is 5 meters per second at an angle of 10 degrees above the positive x-axis. So you would draw your coordinate system in, and you have your angle that's provided, and since it's above the positive x-axis, we're drawing here in the first quadrant. Because we have the hypotenuse and interior angle, in order to find the two sides of the triangle, because we're drawing in our components just like we did when we were summing forces in topic 4, because the x component is adjacent to the angle provided, we're going to use cosine to find the x component. And because the angle is opposite to the y component that we're looking for, we're going to use sine to find the y component. So this is how you would break velocities you're given in the problem into x and y components. And you can then plug those x and y components into the formulas I provided earlier. Once you get your answer, you're going to have an x component and you're going to have a y component. But you want in magnitude and direction instead of just having components. So you need to use Pythagorean's theorem and inverse tangent in order to find magnitude and direction. So we're using this first part up here to split velocities are given in the problem into x and y components. And then once you have an answer, that answer should have an x and y component to each other. You will plug in to find magnitude and direction. So remember, we're really using the beginning parts and the tail parts of the component method in order to successfully complete these steps, which is why we learn the component method, because we need the different steps in it to work with vectors in this course.